So it's been a while since I put out a, another tuning video, so I figured it was probably time to make another one again. This one's gonna be a little bit more random um, and a little bit more basic. Uh, this one is for people who um, are planning to do multiple tuning or tuning a lot of friends vehicles or even tuning customer vehicles. So what we have here is a 2005 five three uh silverado that i tuned now this is the stock file as you can see by the title up top the truck actually has a cam in it but what we're going to do here is we're going to go quickly through a uh, a short video here explaining how you would do a base tune if this was a customer who just pulled up real quick and was like hey i want to tune most tuning when properly done on a V8 Silverado will bring around 30 to 35 wheel horsepower um, because GM dials their trucks back pretty hard. So let's see. Um, we are going to start here. Let's see. General, idle, uh, base tune. You don't have to mess with idle at all unless the customer wants to. Um, you don't need to mess with anything related to airflow. Um, you want to make sure the EGR is disabled and exhaust fuel this is where things need, need to start so power enrichment um, gas pedal I always ask people if they tow if they tow I do like 45% uh, pedal here and 30% pedal here now this is so that the vehicle goes into power enrichment mode uh, I'd like to go through this and explain it a little bit more but uh, I don't think I want to make this video that long so if you need to learn any of the terms that I am saying, just go ahead and Google them and you should be able to come up with a decent one. Um, on this particular vehicle, the RPM power enrichment doesn't start till 5,000 RPMs and it was like 95% pedal. Uh, that's kind of bullshit. So uh, I make a zero RPM, zero delay. The only time I add in an RPM are more modified vehicles that uh, the fueling may come on too quick. I might make power enrichment start a little bit higher uh, or if the feeling is coming on too quick uh, I might actually instead of putting an RPM here I might do something like this where I run stoic up to a certain RPM and then build up to the enrichment. Uh, for those of you who need to know what this stuff means right here. Um, it's been a while, so let me let me bring up the calculator quick here. Make sure I don't say it wrong. So you take your stoic, which is atmospheric pressure in most parts of the country. It's 14.7, um, and then I believe you divide it by let's say 1.195, which is what's in this cell here, equals yep 12.3 to one. Most vehicles make the most power NA at 12.8 to 1. Now, with that being said, trucks are heavier. Heavier vehicles need more gasoline because there's a, a higher load on the vehicle and it is more likely to detonate. So keep that in mind. From here, we are going to go to temperature control, uh, disable catalyst protection, cut off. Uh, this is everyone's own opinion on what to go I'm gonna go up to 7,000 only if the tran because if the tranny has a slow shift we do not want it to bang off the rev limiter if somebody is let's say drag racing things like that um, because it will fuck it'll it'll screw their time up so we go through and I and I bump them all now um, if you bump it all all of this completely you cannot do a crank relearn on this vehicle so make sure that if this is a different engine and you need to do a crank relearn do it before you screw with these rpms um, and there's plenty of videos out there for that and i might make one later uh, but it, it's not really necessary for me to make one there's enough videos out there uh, lean fuel savings uh, if you have a newer model you'll have four cylinder mode or dod uh, just disable that transient don't touch flex fuel don't touch spark for most people most tuning places are going to tell you to do the exact same thing and what they're going to tell you 
is move the high octane table to the low octane table. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different here, and we're going to base it on the fact that a customer right might run different amounts of fuel. So what we're going to do here is we're going to increase this right here. Let's do by 10% and see what that does. We're going to keep going up. We're going to go up till this one is right there. Exactly. So 22. Uh, we're going to go like this. And we're going to go up to roughly here. And we're going to hit this real quick. Now, another place. So this right here typically is the area for fuel mileage. So we're going to add two degrees of timing there. Not bad. Um, and then we're going to leave this like this. Now, now there's more videos on, uh, and I have videos on how to do the timing here because you're going to want to um, go through and, and do a little bit better here with your timing than I'm doing here. But this is just going to be super basic. Copy this table. Move over to the low octane table, paste it in. Now, if you'll notice, this right here is all the same. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take and we are going to minus three degrees from anything that's changed. Um, I done fucked up there. Hold on. See, and I don't like that either. So let me go back here. Oops. Okay, we're going to repaste this in here. Red means it's higher. Okay, everybody. Um, now, what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab all this and we're going to minus three degrees. Okay, see, that's blue. We don't like blue. So we're going to try to. I'll just try to add one degree back in here. We want this stuff to stay stock or higher than stock here. Mm, messed that up there. Okay. The big area here is we're going to want to, we're going to try to pull, see how much timing we can pull out of here. See right there is, that's lower than stock, this is higher than stock, okay? We want to have this area here a little bit higher, okay? That's because again, there's your fuel mileage there, okay? Now if you look here, this is 18 to 19 area here, so we are going to times this by 90% here. Mm, that messed that up. Let's do this a little bit different. Let's take two degrees away from here. And let's do this here. So what we're doing is we're making it so that a customer can run uh, 87 fuel on their vehicle without having to worry about the possibility of there being, uh, I guess, knock per se. Um, I don't want to do that. So if you look here, uh, I don't know what the hell happened there. We don't want that. So let's do this. Mm. 
Okay. This will be a little bit better. You have to play around with it a little bit more. As you can see, there's some places where I messed up. Um, but you get the general idea is that basically want, we want to have less timing here than the high octane table anywhere from three to six degrees in the higher areas here now when you log it you're going to want to look check for knock retard and i have videos on that too now if you have a bunch of knock and things like this back it off you don't want to have knock retard so just go ahead and back it off uh, and make it more safe okay uh, next customer let's make their vehicle sound aggressive we're gonna make customers vehicle sound aggressive so we're going to do negative 35 here, positive 35 here. Um, in this, people will call it a ghost cam. It is not a ghost cam. You are actually allowing the vehicle, the engine, to lope up and down more than you would stock. Uh, the sound is real, but people are going to call it a ghost cam, but it's not uh, overhead cam engine where you're actually faking it. You are actually allowing there to be variation in the idle to get more of the cam sound out. We don't mess with retard, dwell, I don't mess with knock sensors, we leave knock sensors alone. Torque model, torque loss, we leave it alone. Torque management, we come here and we check this and we check this. See, this one is got some issues here, so we go like this, we max this table out. Do not mess with this number. Leave this number alone. This can screw up your throttle body. This can break your computer. Engine on this one, we leave it alone. Abuse, we leave it alone. Go to speedo. Set your max speed higher. You know, obviously, you don't want to run out. Go to system. You can mess with your fans a little bit. If it's got fans, see this has fans here. We're going to... Make this, um, let's say 200, 195. Okay, second stage here, let's say 205, 200. Now don't make it so that your fans run all the time, you're just gonna hurt them. Um, typically, you're gonna get rid of your cats, so you're gonna go to 420 and 430. Do not do no air reported. Do no mill light. Uh, a lot of GM vehicles, if you put no air reported, it will put your vehicle in limp mode misfire if you are going to add the cam sound you need to make sure that the vehicle cannot read misfires in the rpms that you're going to be idling at so you're going to want to come through and let's say we're doing it at 900 and below and you're going to want to max these tables out so that way you're not throwing a misfire code because you will throw a misfire code because engine lope is a misfire now typically it's a misfire caused by valve overlap which in this situation it won't be but you get the example. Leave this stuff alone. Go back to engine. Check idle. Uh, we're giving them that cam sound. So let's bump the idle a little bit. Plus GM trucks idles are kind of low. We'll bump it to 700. We're also giving it the cam sound. So honestly, we should give it a little bit more air at idle. Um, let's say 6.5. Make sure this is in grams per second. This is so it just doesn't die when it's idling from the uh, the lope or the rumble, I should say. Um, the next, you're going to move to the transmission. From here, you're going to want to have the program. Um, where is it? BC Trans Tool. You can download it online. If you can't find it, ask me. I'll email you the file. Uh, I have another video on how to use this. So check that video out don't just watch this and me expect it so let's just say it's a 373 let's just say that the vehicle has a 33 inch tire let's say that it is a 0305 it's a technique it's 04 up truck we want to let's say have it shift to 6300 now keep in mind these will not show 6300 so if you want it to shift to 6300 per gear you need to add it up here until the export shows it which you'll see in a second get rid of the torque converter stall in third gear okay hit export hit export window let's see so from here you copy the table you go to here you paste the table in we do this on normal performance cruise go to next wide on throttle shift speed also normal performance cruise 
RPM, as you notice, 6,050, 6,200, 6,250. Go through, paste those in. Go to Torque Converter. It's going to have the lockup table. Copy that as well. Apply release, normal, cruise, whatever. Do the exact same thing. And that'll be your getting your transmission dialed in based on gear ratio, tire size, and RPM. Um, torque management, I leave it enabled. Um, I go through here and I go through anywhere where there's a table and I only take away a little bit. So we're going to take away 10%. Um, I'm, again, you leave abuse mode. Go to shift pressure. Bump this to 95. Go to upshift. Go to normal. Normal, we're going to add 5%. Performance, we're also going to add 5%. I don't like to go above 95 PSI myself. I leave downshift alone typically. I go to shift timing next. We go to normal shift timing. We usually take off 5%, so times by 0.95. Regular performance, go here. I usually take off 10%, 0 0.9. You want to be very liberal with the transmission. I don't know if liberal, conservative with the transmission because a lot of GM transmissions are glass. Small changes are the best way to go. Now, um, that's it. That's a base tune for a Silverado. That by itself is enough to make a customer happy. So obviously from there you want to save it as a new file um, and see what the customer likes from there. Um, any questions, feel free to subscribe. Uh, you know, obviously subscribe, but feel free to message me and ask. Um, I gotta figure out where my thing is here. All right.